Hey, question for you guys. What do you get when you mix a little bit of the old school Pure Boost vibes with a little touch of the Pure Boost 2017, as well as a little bit of a mix of the DPR? Boom. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a review of the brand new Adidas Pure Boost Go. What is going on guys, Has here, collectivekicks.com, and if you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check that link in the description. In this video, as I mentioned, I'm going to be reviewing this brand new model right here, and I am actually really excited for this one. This is kind of like the best of both worlds. You have the Pure Boost OG vibes along with the newer models, and if you had to blend them all up and bring them down to a cheaper price point, this is what you'd actually get. $120 is the base price on the Pure Boost Go, and these fit true to size. Big shout out to Adidas Running for actually sending me this pair. It was actually a pair of sneakers that I was going to pick up one way or the other. So even better to get them sent to my house before I actually have to even go to the store or buy them online. If you guys actually want to buy your own pair of these, check the link in the description and you guys can go ahead and buy them on adidas.com. This model to me might be the closest thing to the Adidas Ultra Boost that you can actually buy. I've tried the more expensive Solar Boost as well as the POD and I have to say that I actually prefer this shoe over the other two models and it's the cheaper of the three. This is just my personal opinion though. If you guys have a variance in opinion, leave a comment in the comment section. I'll get into some reasons why I like this shoe better in just a second but let's go ahead and give you guys just a general overview so as you can see there is a knit upper but it is not prime knit however this is actually a really soft knit it's definitely softer than on this pair and then on the DPRs you have the prime knit upper but honestly this is pretty darn close it's not the most premium luxurious upper but it is really nice especially for that $120 price point you do have some reinforcement in this midsection right here as you can see with the three stripes branding as you move your way up to the laces, you can see that they actually introduced a little bit of a different lacing system. I don't have my original Pure Boost 1s out here. I do have a pair of DS in a box somewhere, but I can't find them. These were the OG Pure Boost 2s, and you can see that it had just a little bit of lace holes here. The 2017 version was a little bit simpler. The DPRs didn't have any of those nylon hoops, but they just had some reinforcement with embroidery. And on this version, you can see they made three different Vs for the laces, and that's how they locked down the shoe. As for the tongue, this is the biggest topic for these shoes because the Pure Boost 2017 was a great shoe until you get to the burrito tongue. A lot of people did not like this burrito tongue and the crazy folding that this thing had on it originally. And so the DPR was actually nice because it actually had a really soft, nice tongue. And in this version, they actually changed the tongue up again. It's an attached, detached tongue. The closest thing this reminds me of is the pod tongue because it's an attached tongue, as you can see right here. It flares up and it has a little bit of a flimsy structure. So it is kind of really, really flimsy if you're looking for some padding and stuff. It's just a regular knit tongue. On the positive side, I love the aesthetics of the shoe. I like that they have the mock tongue here. And also the fact that you can wear the laces really loose like this. Like I can literally just slip the shoe on. And all I did was take the lace and put it through the top hole here and it just kind of flares out. But really, it's really simple to get on your foot and it's extremely comfortable once you put it on your foot. As you work your way to the heel of the shoe, it definitely is a lower ride than on some of the other models. So if you like that extra height on the back of your shoe, it's not something that you're gonna find in this model. And there's a comparison to the, the other Pure Boost. You can see it's much taller on this older version. And then on the even older version, you could see that they actually had that little heel tab here. So although this is really low, it's actually not bad for your foot though. It's really comfortable and you definitely don't feel like your heel is gonna slip out of the shoe. And the best part is you actually do have some reinforcement back here and it's an interesting pattern. I don't really know how to describe the material. It's kind of like a rubberized plastic, almost like a hyperfuse, but not. But anyways, this is definitely firm and it adds a lot of stability to the back section of the shoe. You also do have some extra reinforcement right here as well. The collar doesn't have any extra padding or anything like that, but you do get a little padding on the inside of the shoe. All in all, the shoe is very minimal, but I like that they added a little bit of extra to the shoe so it's not just a knit upper and that's it. Like it has some layers to it, which is a nice feature. On to the best part about the shoe for myself personally still, cause Boost still is life. Halfway through 2018 and I'm still rocking Boost every single week, but this midsole is really, really nice. It's a huge, big pile of Boost on the bottom of the shoe. Then you do have a stretch web outsole, but this is not the Continental Rubber that you guys may know and love. It still feels really nice though, to be honest. It's not bad at all. The midsole though, you could see is an insanely wide pattern and I love the fact that this is so wide foot friendly. I mean, look at how wide this is. It's just insane. It's so big. You also have a big, huge section on the back and then it also bubbles up and around. So it's just a really big, huge, um, so it's just a really big, huge midsole. Feels really good on feet. And I have to tell you the first time I tried these on, 
uh it was an insane feeling i was wearing a different pair of sneakers for the day came home try these on in my kitchen and i was just blown away it brings me back to the very first time i tried on a pair of boost the pure boost ones i know these are the twos but the pure boost ones had that same midsole as this one it was such a crazy squishy feeling how you could just sink down into the boost and i loved that sensation this definitely reminded me of that first time uh, I tried on Boost. It's not better than it's not better than the Ultra Boost per se, but it's just a really really comfortable pair of sneakers. And for a casual guy like myself, these are easy to put on, and they don't break the bank at $120. And overall, I like the stylish look of the shoe as well. So why is this the best pair of Boost shoes next to the Ultra Boost? In my personal opinion, for $120, it takes the best elements of the comfort from the Pure Boost One and Two OGs from back in the day with a really comfortable squishy midsole feel but it also borrows that wide track pattern from the Pure Boost 2017s, which I really, really liked as well. And for those wondering, it is a different stretch web pattern. It looks very, very similar though. It's a smaller pattern on the new pair versus the 2017s. So it took some of the other elements from those shoes and then you have a little bit sleeker design on the DPRs. And I feel like this has a more similar design to the DPRs than the previous two models. So kind of the best of all of the worlds for the Pure Boost fan out there. I feel like if you're a fan of any of the previous models of Pure Boost, this one's going to be your favorite out of the four. And personally for me as well, this is going to be my go-to out of the other models out there. I think that this one just looks more stylish and has the best midsole out of the rest. And also for those that care about this, it does have an insole in the shoe. I personally don't care about the insole, but these do have an insole. And then if you take it out, it just looks like the other Pure Boost and it just says uh, Pure Boost on the bottom. If I had a nitpick, there's only one real complaint I have about the shoe, and that's this section across here. It feels like they need more material, like raised up a little bit, so it's not so snug straight across down this way. I know it's really wide foot friendly, but if you have a really like club foot and it sticks up, it's not going to be able to stick up very high. It just kind of comes straight across instead of like up and around. And that's the only thing I can think of that might bug people. Leave a comment in the comment section if you guys actually try those out and if that's something that you feel as well. Other than that, it would have been nice to have some extra reinforcement on the tongue so it wasn't so flimsy. But I actually do like the knit on the tongue. It just would have been nice to have a little bit of reinforcement. And then possibly just a little bit higher on the heel section of the shoe or a loop or something like that would have been nice just for an extra little aesthetic. But, um, but again, this one doesn't bother me because it's lower. It's just noticeably lower than the other models. Anyways, that is my thoughts on the Pure Boost Go. If you guys do want to buy a pair, check the link in the description. And hopefully you can find a colorway that you like. They look like they had four of them available available already and uh, definitely is a cool shoe that I think that a lot of people are probably going to sleep on and at the end of the day it is a comfortable pair of shoes. If you guys do get the opportunity to try them on before you buy them definitely do it and see how they fit and then maybe report back and leave some feedback on the video on your guys's thoughts on how they fit. As I mentioned again I would say true to size it is wide foot friendly. All in all it's a very comfortable shoe and I'm definitely glad I gave it a try and hopefully I gave you guys a good enough look at this new model that you guys can make a decision whether or not it's something that you guys want to add to your collections or not. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching. If you guys are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, notification bell to be notified of when my videos go live. I try to post videos like five or six days a week. And if you guys want to like the video, please go ahead and drop a like on the video. It's much appreciated. And at this time, if you guys want to click the screen and check out any of the other videos on my channel, feel free to do so. But thank you guys again for stopping by. More videos soon. Peace, guys.